welcome to the Marine Channel. My name's Jason. And I'm David. And we're sat on the back of Fairline 68. Now, it's such an enormous boat, we decided it's too big for one of us. So we're going to split up. David, you can show them some stuff. I'll show them some stuff. And uh, we'll see where we end up. Where do you want to go first? Let's go on the flybridge. Okay, well, you can go. <laughs> and I'll stay here. We'll try the company. <laughs> Right, I'm up in the hot seat on the flybridge um, at the helm, and, and what a helm it is. Look at all this glass, um, huge screens displaying all the relevant information, um, beautiful little electronic controls close at hand here, um, bow thrusters here, uh, and as I say, just, just a tremendous view for um, looking over the boat and, uh, and seeing what's about. Um, this boat is probably of the size to uh, merit crew, but it's, it's small enough to be owner-operated. So uh, you've got space here, a very sociable space for um, friends, family, while you're traveling, um, uh, you know, in, in, in extreme comfort. Now, what I would say about this flybridge is it is absolutely huge, and it's really in three different zones. So here we've got the, uh, the, the, the helming zone with some social space here, and here we've got a beautiful dining table um, with lovely features such as pop-up lights for um, some ambient light at night. Um, and on this side of the uh, boat here, we have uh, storage for glasses, cups, uh, and crockery and glasses down there as well. So this is the really kind of the, the um, entertaining and, and eating area. Um, moving back again into the third zone, um, and the start of the third zone really is this uh, quite substantial wet bar. Um, and if we just lift these up, a really good size sink. Um, Flybridges tend to have smaller sinks normally. Under this side, um, a lovely electric griddle. And then down here, we have a bin in there and a decent sized fridge and an all important ice maker to keep those drinks cold. This one's just storage. And then if we move aft again, we're into this beautiful relaxing area. Um, and I think a real thing of note is the, the different fabrics that have been used throughout to distinguish the different zones. But imagine sitting here, drinks sitting safely in your little cup holders there, um, looking out past the carbon fly fibre flagstaff um, at the wake as you leave port. Um, just a fabulous place to be and such a great entertaining space. Um, that's the flybridge. I wonder where Jason is. So here we are, main saloon area. Just want to show you this. Look at the seating here. How lovely is this? What a fantastic place to sit and survey the world and feel like the megalomaniac that you're probably going to have to be to afford a beautiful boat like this. Seriously, it's lovely, lovely, lovely. The bar here, we've got a couple of stools. So we can sit up here. We can have our drinks. We can chit chat away. Obviously, when the bar's kind of not in use, you've got this panel that drops down and closes that off. But let's have a little look inside the saloon. Um, folding doors, of course, three of those, seal the whole thing off. These are rather nice as well. These little blinds, really, really slim. And again, that just gives you the privacy if you're kind of aft too, but come on through. So galley area, all very nice. Melee appliances, we like that. Oven, loads and loads of chiller area here. So have a little look in there. We've got one chiller area. We've got another chiller area. I think, yay. Oh, we've got, a, we've got a dishwasher there. Don't know how they work. Never really tried them. And then we've got, you can never have too much storage. All the lovely cutlery. The weight of that just tells you everything you need to know about the build quality on this boat. Ah, yes, there's the other fridges. Swing around here, Ben. There we go, another chiller cabinet there. And another chiller cabinet there. Possibly the most chilled boat at the show. Do I have a look in here? Yeah, some more storage. Lovely view out, lots of glazing. Overhead storage with your lovely Fairline glasses. Plastic. They look like crystal. That's good though, because you don't want to be dropping one of those and shattering it. Um, and then your, your sink over here. Oh my goodness, that is the heaviest piece. If you could feel that, it's about 10 kilos. And a lovely, great big sink. On this side, nice dining area. Uh, these bits and pieces will fold out. Let's just try it. And just look at this, all this beveling on here, all this quality. And look at the grain. One continuous piece of wood. So it all matches up. 
How cool is that? <clears throat> and they've used this kind of, if you look over in the middle here, I'm going to move this off because it's so lovely when you open it up. They don't need to do this, but they have done this because it just, look at that. It's like a, like a burr veneer in there. And then this feature line, and that appears in other places around the boat. It just looks fantastic. You could probably sit, I don't know, six, eight. There's a couple of stools underneath here you can pull out. But that is a good dining area. It's really close to the galley. And then we move on forward. And how chilled is this? How lovely is this? And one of the things that Fairline are very, very good at is using lots of different fabrics and lots of different textures. So you can see here the upholstery on this kind of lounge area is different than the dining area, is different from the, uh, the helm seats, and it all works really well. So you do feel that you're in different parts of the boat. This table, by the way, is high-low. So uh, a couple of buttons here, just press that. So it can be a coffee table, obviously, or it could be another dining area. And again, we see when we fold this out, how beautifully that's done. This time they're handed. So the grain goes in the V, and then we've got this lovely veneer here in the middle. It just all feels fabulously substantial as well. Uh, moving forward, so we've got the helm. Just have a little look at there. How often will you helm from down here when you've got a lovely, lovely flybridge? I don't know, but what a great place to be. And you've got side access straight out onto the uh, side decks as well. So very, very easy to get around this boat. And it's just beautiful. It's just very, very nicely done, very tastefully done. It's a lovely, lovely boat. They've done this incredibly well. And everything you touch, everything you see, just feels like it's going to last a lifetime. It feels like you're in a, a very high quality motor car. It's that kind of level of quality. Anyway, that's enough for me upstairs. Let's catch up with David, who's going to show us down below. Right, I've moved down uh, to the accommodation now. Let's have a look at what we've got down here for um, the guests. Um, a really nice spacious lobby before we start in the bow in the guest or VIP cabin. And this is a really good size cabin. Um, this is the second largest cabin, so it's, it's not the biggest, but it's uh, still a great size. In here we've got... A decent sized wardrobe. Again, you've got this funky lighting in there. Um, nice sized TV. Um, and when you're lying in bed, you can look out here at the water and what's going on outside with these lovely windows there. Um, a great raised bed. You've got a hatch up there so you can have natural light or, or watch the stars at night. Um, and if we move over here, Ben, do you want to just go in there? Because there probably isn't room for both of us. So this is the ensuite for this cabin, which again is a really, really good size and so beautifully fitted out. Um, lovely shower screen, um, shower screened uh, shower, um, and just, just really nice quality fittings. Plenty of storage for all your knickknacks, but uh, just, just the quality is, uh, is quite stunning. So moving aft, we come into the second cabin here. I'll let you catch up. So this is a twin, um, but again, a really good size twin. Um, this boat is actually available with four cabins. This is the three cabin version. Um, so you could have an extra cabin, but this feels really nice. And I love the little book here, um, the little book of sleep. But uh, here you've got sound systems built into the ceiling up here. Um, and just a lovely quality feel. Now what this cabin has also got, if I open this door, is again its own ensuite, which isn't shared by another cabin, um, and uh, again a good size shower stall, loo, basin, etc. Um, but but a really nice size and again beautifully fitted out. Next door we have is the day heads. Again a really nice size room, nicely fitted out, and again not used by any other um, cabin. And what I will do just go in and show you this storage over here which if I just squeeze in here because you've got plenty of storage look at that racking there and there and again down below here. so just just plenty of room to put everything so those are the two smaller cabins believe it or not let's just go down here and I'll just pop this one open because here you've got huge bank of circuit breakers 
just in case you need to get any of those. And on this side, you have the obligatory washer dryer. Right, let's have a look what's in here. Oh, God, I'm sorry. That could be awkward. <laughs> I was going to have a shower. Have you seen these towels? <laughs> How fluffy is that? That is absolutely. <laughs> they are very small. I'll hold off for a bit. You, you, you please do, off. please do. Off. Right, let's have a quick, <laughs> quick look around. Awkward. <laughs> I'll go this way. I'll go this way. I'll just casually lie on the bed. Nothing to see here. <laughs> so, full beam master cabin, and and what a space this is. Huge hull windows, meaning that Jason will probably demonstrate by lying on the bed and showing that you've got a great view out of the, the, the side windows. I'm <laughs> in my, on the long. <laughs> so we've got to, to both sides here. We've got an office this side um, with desk for working from from home, uh, and on this side we have a, a sofa for reclining there. But it's got an amazing feel. Huge headroom again. Again, I'm six foot two. Um, behind the door. A uh, great size TV for watching in bed, um, but just a, a lovely, comfortable feel and, and beautiful fabrics. And again, the use of lighting behind every panel. So this looks like a hotel bathroom, doesn't it? Massive shower, really nicely fitted out, plenty of storage and really feels quality items in there. And again, a huge hole window. So everybody can watch Jason showering. Um, I've got to say, David, <laughs> Uh, don't hold that thought. Don't visualise that in your own head. Uh, I did walk into the shower door. It was so clean. I nearly did. I that. thought it was open. Is that fair? It sounds like Ben has just done the same. <laughs> yeah, we don't have really clean glass. No, we so don't. It's, like it's a, a safety, safety thing, a safety thing so to keep them scruffy. Absolutely. I've got to say as well, the, these boats, I mean, thank you very much to Fairline, but these boats are immaculate, aren't they? I mean, they, they're... They're Absolutely. constantly cleaning and preening. I've got to fold this up like a swan yeah. now um, <laughs> and put it back. But it's just immaculate. It's absolutely, it's not a fingerprint anywhere. No. So well done to all the valeting team. And Absolutely. The they were all here early this morning. I saw them when I got here. Yes. So um, there is another bedroom though. Let's go and have a look. Well, I'll go and have a look. <laughs> you stay here and relax, David. <laughs> Thank you, I will. And um, yeah, just Have you got sure. the remote for the TV while you... Uh, yeah. I'll, okay. um, no, I'll leave that for you. Thanks very much. But I'll, I'll see you in a minute. So I promised you another bedroom and here I am sat in it. It's the crew cabin, hence the brush, because I'm having to work for a living now. What I've got to say is, yes, it's not huge, not compared with what we've just been in, but it is very comfortable. And what impresses me is that Fairline haven't cut any corners. Look at the, look at the woodwork, look at the finish on that. It's all up there with the quality you've got on the rest of the boat. So if you've got crew, they're going to feel very happy in here. Two berths, of course. But it's actually good enough if you've got guests or kids and they want to have a little bit of space and uh, it's a fourth bedroom. It's not just uh, it's not just a crew cabin. You can see in there, we've got a rather nice little bathroom as well. So we've got heads, um, sink, toilet, shower, everything you could possibly need. Um, plenty of storage around the place, good hanging wardrobe as well. Nice lighting and we've got, Ben, if you have a little look up there, we've actually got a view of the sky. So it doesn't feel claustrophobic at all. It's being used at the moment, obviously we're on a show this is all the uh, this is all the valeting kit and so forth, um, but yeah, I think it's a lovely, lovely space. So uh, yeah, I'd be relatively happy here as crew or as a guest. Nice. Here we are in the engine room, and who doesn't love an engine room, especially when it's one like this? First thing that strikes you is the room you've got in here, the space. Um, I'm six foot two, plenty of room uh, above my head there, um, and the ability to get round the engines and uh, and work on everything. Um, Caterpillar C18 engines, uh, 2,300 horsepower between the two of them, which are what allow this boat to do 31 knots. And 31 knots for a boat this size is pretty impressive. Um, these engines are obviously brand new. Um, sorry about the covers. This is uh, just being stored here for the show. Um, interesting thing here, we have a, a repeat of all the dials and information and data um, which mechanics and, and service guys can use when they are um, working on the engine, save them having to go up and down to the helm. But let's have a look around the engine room as well. Um, over starting on the, the starboard side here, you can see one of the fuel tanks. There's an identical one on the other side, twin tanks, one for each uh, engine. 
Um, interesting feature here, we've got a, a camera. This will be linked to the MFDs on the helms so that you can always see in the engine room and just check there's nothing horrible going on there. Um, just a quick work round, we've got the electronic controls for the ZF gearboxes. Um, twin fuel filters for each engine so you can switch from one to the other should you get a blockage. Um, they're really useful with pressure gauges as well um, which record the maximum pressure that's been uh, seen during any, um, any running period um, and again it kind of tells you when you need to be changing your filters. Um, walking around again we've got the, uh, the port tank over there. Um, over here we've got the aircon system, um, huge for a boat of the size obviously. Um, down here we have the gen set uh, for running stabilizers and uh, aircon and everything when you're um, at sea. And here's the electronic system, so uh, all the primary panels for AC and DC um, and the battery chargers. Um, these two things here are the uh, isolators for the bow and stern thrusters. But uh, just a beautifully laid out engine room. Right, I wonder where Jason is. So Jason, I think you've got a job as crew on this boat. Do you reckon? I think you have. It was a little bit tight in there. I think I think I think I need a bigger boat to be honest. Yeah. But this is nice, isn't it? I like this. This is lovely. The only thing we're missing is something to put in that cup holder, really. Oh, I've got an idea. <laughs> have I've you? got a song about that, yeah. <laughs> no, it's lovely, isn't it? I, and that's the impressive thing, isn't it? When we think about how boats have changed over the last kind of decade or so. It's what they're doing at the front on big boats. You know, you've got a whole nother area. You've got a flybridge, you've got an area here, you've got air in the stern there. You've got lots of different places to chill out. That's right. And, and this obviously created for when you're stern to mooring to mm. give you some privacy away from uh, the, the prying eyes of, uh, yeah, onlookers. I'm, it's almost warm enough. I could just flop out there and catch some rays. Do you think that... Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't. It's too early for that. So this boat, um, price-wise... Well, it's starting at two and a half million, including VAT, but by the time you spec it up, probably closer to three. Yeah, I'll put three aside. Put three I aside. I don't want to leave myself short. No. What I love about this boat, apart from the way it looks, it does look spectacular. I love the use of light. I know I bang on about this, but all those LEDs, all those, that, that, that thing on the flybridge, that little light that pop you up, yeah. pop up light, it just elevates it and it just makes it a kind of a really cool place to be, doesn't definitely, it? Definitely, definitely. And the different areas and zones and, and, and the real difference in feel, I think, mm. there as well. And that owner's cabin, that bed. <laughs> I, could, <laughs> I could fall asleep there in a heartbeat. Anyway, listen, we've waffled on enough. We hope that you've enjoyed the little tour we've done on the 68. Um, we're the Marine Channel. Please subscribe, please follow us, and we'll update you when we launch uh, new videos. But from David and I down here in Southampton on a very sunny day, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.